Tired of horror movies filled with monsters that don't really exist? Well, today's movie was inspired by a horrifying real-life crime. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're covering Gerald Cargill's artsy serial killer flick, Angst. Released in 1983, Angst has caused controversy from day one. The film, inspired by a real-life home invasion killing spree, was banned throughout Europe. Often compared to Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, Cargill's film did eventually find an audience for its tale of madness and murder, but it killed the filmmaker's career in the process. This is a shame, as Angst has garnered a cult reputation in the intervening decades and has fans like Irreversible director Gaspar Noé. Angst is a fantastic film, significantly better than most of the stuff I cover on Sick Flicks. But is it splattery? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Josh Tosh, Mario S. Leone, and Jason and Chrissy Zulagi. Hope I got those names right. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos, sign up for my Patreon. You'll find a link in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on this dude going for a walk. It's really cool to see what Gollum looked like before the One Ring corrupted him. And this is basically a vlog at this point. This early selfie stick technology is pretty amazing. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to take you on a murder spree. Don't forget to stab that subscribe button. I don't know, this vlog is a little slow. Could use more jump cuts and memes or something. He eventually winds up at this house and he's not screwing around. Do you have my precious? Damn, guess she didn't have it. Then he's like, okay guys, off to the next. And we get some exposition. Er versteckt sich und kehrt um 2 Uhr früh an den Tatort zurück, wo er von der Polizei verhaftet wird. Smeagol gets caught and he's got the serial killer home invasion starter kit with him. Führt folgende Gegenstände mit sich. Eine Pistole mit 18 Schuss Munition. Eine Rolle Leukoplast. Ein Elektrokabel. This guy's like BTK in the making. Turns out this is a motiveless crime, but don't worry, Dr. John C. Riley is on the case. Er erklärt den Angeklagten für zurechnungsfähig und für die Tat voll verantwortlich. Then we get this shot of Theon Greyjoy's class picture. He was voted most likely to become Reek. Does anyone even make Game of Thrones jokes anymore? And this is a lot of eye zoom. Is Gerald Cargill a Lucio Fulci pseudonym? From there, this turns into something like an early episode of Rob Gavigan's Serial Killer Files. Das Kind wächst bei der Großmutter auf. Sie geniert sich für ihr Enkelkind, weil es unehelich geboren wurde. Or maybe it's making a murder. Großmutter schickt ihn ins Kloster. Als man ihn dort erwischt, wie er Tiere mit einem Messer attackiert, muss er das Kloster verlassen. It should be noted that all of this used pretty closely to the real-life crimes of Werner Niesick, which makes what we're about to see all the more shocking. Anyway, our killer got started early is the key takeaway. He's the proverbial bad seed. Vorerst fängt er Tiere. Er martert sie und hat Spaß daran. With the prologue over, we jump into the credits. That's right, we're like eight minutes into angst and we haven't even got to the credits. I admire Gerald Cargill for getting right down to business. And look at these title cards. They look like someone made them in PowerPoint during a junior high graphic design class. With the credits over, we move into the movie proper. And if you didn't believe me when I said this film was inspired by true events, well, here you go. Um, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think this movie has a leak. We then head inside for an episode of Cribs. Check out Theon's sweet studio apartment. This really is the weirdest Campbell's Soup commercial ever. Die Angst in ihren Augen und das Messer in der Brust. Das ist die letzte Erinnerung an meine Mutter. I can see why they didn't run with this marketing campaign. With his Campbell's spokesperson career a bust, our killer tries Gillette instead. This doesn't seem to work either. Mir geholfen, diesen Drang etwas einfach ein Ventil zu schaffen. The good news is he'll be able to resume his hunt for the one true ring because he's getting out of jail. Dude only served 10 years for icing that old lady. It's good to see that the justice system is terrible in other countries too. So what's the first thing you're going to do once you get out? Oh, I don't know. Probably go on a killing spree. Mir war klar, es wird wieder passieren. Es muss. Aber diesmal werden sie mich nicht erwischen. See? Told you. Just save my cell. I'm most likely going to be right back. And then it's the saddest episode of Love After Lockup ever. 
Abgeholt hat mich niemand. Keine Familie. Nichts. Wonder what this plan could be? Murder? Or judging by that suitcase, he might just be selling Encyclopedia Britannica's door to door. Rather than get to work, he stops for a bite to eat. And he's clearly been in prison for 10 years because his first meal out and he's still eating sausage. But everything's coming up Millhouse because these babes are checking him out. Sie haben mich angestarrt. Man, he's really going to town on that brat. I fear the worst for it. Weirdest mukbang video ever. I also feel like the title of this movie is accurate. All of these close-ups are certainly causing me angst. He heads back out to the street and I'm gonna need some Dramamine with all this shaky cam. Dann ist mir der Zufall zu Hilfe gekommen. This is how you had to shoot things back before we had drones. Then he hops in this cab. She's like, don't tell me where to go. Oh wait, I'm a taxi driver. Go ahead. They head out and he's gonna tie her up with his shoelace. Just hände fesseln, dann Mund verkleben. <laughs> Guess it's a good thing he doesn't wear Velcro sneakers. But before he can put his plan in motion, this driver gives him the boot. She might drive a cab for a living, but she's certainly not going the extra mile for this guy. And now he's running like he's the fifth member of the far side. Or maybe he's in Flock of Seagulls. You make the call. At any rate, the music in this film, which is uniformly excellent, was composed by ex-Tangerine Dream member Klaus Schultz. He's either wandered into the Evil Dead or Return of the Jedi. But I'm cool with either. After his run through the jungle, he winds up at this empty house. Where he demonstrates the stealthiest way to enter a home. By destroying the window. Fun fact, actor Irwin later insisted on breaking a real window for this scene. He injured himself in the process. You could say it was a real pain in the glass to get this shot. Afterwards, he's like, damn, this window was unlocked the whole time. I like that he relatches the window after going in. That seems important in light of the fact that it has no glass now. He's sneaking through the place like Goldilocks when he stumbles onto Franklin from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Meine Opfer. Don't worry though, our criminal mastermind has a plan. I'll take the stairs, he'll never follow me up here. Stairs? No! Turns out there's more company coming. This looks like an Austrian Evil Dead in this scene. Alright, who's ready for a weekend at a cabin in the woods? Inside, budget Agnes Moorhead pours herself a drink. Do you kids even remember Agnes Moorhead on Bewitched? Christ, I'm old. Why does it look like she's about to drink olive oil? Meanwhile, the dog is heading upstairs. Careful, puppy. We've already established this guy likes to eat wieners. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean tasty sausages. Oh yeah, I don't like the way he's looking at this dog. He's basically envisioning him covered in spicy mustard. After settling in, Agnes realizes someone's busted the window. She's really shattered by this discovery. Look, I know my attempts to make you laugh at stupid window puns are totally transparent. Sylvia is coming to investigate, but our killer picks this time to make his move. He starts by pulling Sylvia into another room. It's a real drag. Then he tapes her to the door. He clearly wants her to stick around. After that, he's choking Agnes. This must be the long rumored lost episode of Bewitched where Darren strangles Endora. While they're struggling, her dentures fall out. Sure hope that doesn't come back to bite him. Jokes aside, this is a fairly accurate portrayal of what Nisik did to his victims. With everyone subdued, it's time to get to work. He starts by strangling Franklin. He's channeling his inner Iron Sheik with this application of the camel clutch. Franklin's sure to tap out at any second, but that doesn't work so he decides to give him a bath instead. Aw oh man, you're getting water all over the floor. Who's gonna mop that up? At any rate, Reek wishes this were him and Ramsey Bolton. Afterwards, he heads back downstairs. This is why they never asked Agnes Moorhead to be on Dancing with the Stars. I dachte, sie spielt mir was vor. Wie ein Fuchs, der sich tut. She's kind of stiff. She's not dead though, she just needs her meds. Sie braucht Medizin. 
in der Küche. This is another tidbit from the real story. Nisa gave the mother her heart medication to keep her alive so she'd suffer more before he killed her. Jetzt blieb mir nur mehr das Mädchen. Or maybe she is dead. Man, he's really not all that good at this whole torturing people thing. With two of the three hostages now deceased, he sets off on a game of cat and mouse as he searches for Sylvia. He heads upstairs, but she's coming out of the closet. Literally. My precious. My precious. Man, my Gollum sucks. She makes a break for it, but Gollum here is in hot pursuit. Then he stabs her with Sting. It's interesting to note that Gaspar Noé loves angst, and this scene feels a bit like a dry run for the brutal alley scene in Noé's Irreversible. This kill is really where angst earns its reputation. The stabbing here is gruesome, but there's no way YouTube will let me show you it. I will tell you that Cargo used pig's blood here instead of stage blood in order to increase the realism. And if that weren't rough enough, it then manages to get worse when he goes all vampire and starts drinking her blood. This sequence is why angst was banned in most of Europe in the 80s. But hey, the dog lived, and he's like, man, let me tell you, I've seen some shit. I feel like it's kind of Cargill to give us an extended dog scene after that last murder. We probably all could use a moment after that. After finishing the murders, our killer heads back out into the world. Try not to look conspicuous, just play it cool, man. If you're wondering how there's still almost 30 minutes left in this movie, you're not alone. Everyone's dead. What's he going to do now? He eventually makes his way to the garage where he's about to head out for a Sunday drive. I mean, it makes sense. Things are pretty dead around the house at this point. But lest you think our killer is the kind of rude guy who would murder and run, he heads back inside to take his new friends with him. He starts with Franklin, who's just lounging around in the tub. Watch your face on the steps, Franklin. I've heard of 12 step programs, but this seems ridiculous. And apparently we're gonna fill the last 25 minutes of this movie watching him move the corpses in real time. I mean, come on, Gerald Cargill, we get it. Then it's back for Agnes, and some more narration. Ich habe mit den Leichen auch noch etwas vorgehabt. Fun fact, some of the killer's dialogue in the film was taken from real serial killer confessions. All of this ties into the real crime. Nisik loaded the family into a trunk and took them with him. With everyone ready, our killer opts for curbside pickup. The really nice thing about these old Mercedes is that they have a lot of trunk space. You can fit three bodies in there with room for the groceries. I mean, dude, there are easier ways to qualify for the carpool lane. Back inside, the dog's like, I want to go for a ride in the car. Take me. I'm a good boy. After a quick change of clothes, he heads back out. I admire a man who dons a white coat to dispose of bodies. You could even say he's high-tailsing it out of there. He kind of looks like he's doing a weird Highlander cosplay. Then he takes off, and he brought the dog. <coughs> say what you will, but that dog does a great Jessica Tandy impression. Hey, are you guys okay back there? You seem dead quiet. And just when it looks like he's gonna get away, he immediately rear-ends the first car he sees. Nice work, dummy. He's got the hit part of hit and run down, but the running part could definitely use some work. Man, this is like a real life GTA 5 at this point. The dog's like, do you want me to drive? If you're worried this isn't gonna end well, don't fret. Ich hatte ja schon einen perfekten Plan. I'm sure. I mean, the plan has been flawless in its conception and execution so far. What could go wrong now? Oh Christ, he's going back to the diner. I guess those brats were pretty amazing. Um, all the same people are there from yesterday. Do these people live there? Do they not have homes? The good news is he looks totally natural. Not suspicious at all. Out in the car, the dog's like, you forgot to leave the radio on for me. But before he can go do that, 5-0 shows up. They're just here to check if Angst has a filming permit for this scene. Hey, this is a real nice Benz you got. Why does it smell like corpses, though? After some more jibber-jabber, they're like, I hear this thing's got a spacious trunk. Mind if we take a look? He pops it open and everyone stares while a psychiatrist starts a voiceover. 
Auszug aus dem psychiatrischen Gutachten. Der Patient hat die vorliegende Tat bewusst geplant. And as the credits roll, we learn his sentence. Urteil im Namen des Volkes, lebenslange Zuchthausstrafe. Angst is definitely one of the best films I've covered on this channel. Gargle's film is well made, the lead performance from Erwin Later is excellent, and the true crime angle gives it more gravitas than your standard slasher flick. But is that enough to earn Angst five barf bags? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Angst mostly delivers. We're treated to a strangulation, a drowning, and that absolutely brutal stabbing. The stabbing is the film's signature moment, and it's brutal enough to earn Angst three barf bags all on its own. This isn't a super splattery film, but it's certainly disturbing. Looking for another controversial movie with plenty of splatter? Then be sure to check out my review of Cannibal Holocaust. You'll find a link here on the screen after my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. Alright, let's make the magic happen. The film, which was... Good writing. Good writing today, guys. Every week I make a joke about not proofreading my scripts, and then I don't proofread my scripts. Often compared to Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Ser serial Killer? You know, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Cargill's film did eventually find an audience for its tale of madness murder. God damn. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons. 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 I'd like to thank my patrons for all their significant contributions. You know, the beginning is supposed to be the easiest part, because I say the same shit every week, but I can't even get it right today. Which is what we're about, which, bleh, bleh. Fuck. I don't know why, but this room is like a sauna today. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Come on, let's get it together. And if that weren't rough enough, it then manages to get worse when he starts... Oh, God damn it. This job would be just a lot easier if I could just read the words on the screen. And just as he's about... Just as he's... As he's, as he's, as he's Ooh, that was a tough one, guys, because I can't read and it's 800 degrees in here.